Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and by popular demand, I'm gonna do a video on 48 hours or two days as a validation risk officer. So far, I've got up, I've showered, I'm ready for the day, uh, and here I'm just diving into a call. This call is going to be at least an hour. Uh, we're gonna be discussing model usage, which gets very complicated and how the businesses actually use the models, and then we're gonna be talking about validation issues, uh, things that our validation team sees with these models that are essentially not correct or we think are not correct, and then we're trying to get more understanding on why they're not correct, and then providing solutions and suggestions to fix these. Um, so this is an hour long meeting, this is discussing uh, everything about the analytics that we've done so far, trying to figure out the business, trying to figure out the model use. So this is very soft side focused. And then on the flip side here, once we get enough information, we present our findings, we talk to the model developers, the model users, uh, then we can really dive in and figure out where we need to go from here in the validation. So let's just dive on in here to the 48 hours. Uh, I will be working from home both days. I typically go into the office three days a week, uh, sometimes up to five, sometimes as little as two. But at the end of the day, we're gonna do working from home because of all the proprietary nature of banking in general. But I hope you guys like this video, so let's dive on in. It's already 3.35 today. Uh, I've spent probably the last two to three hours now since we last checked in um, screwing around with servers. Um, this happens from time to time. It's winter time especially, but issues happen, servers go down, connectivity is bad, and so you essentially can't run things. And right now I'm trying to model stuff in SAS, which is our prime language here, and I just can't get anything to run because our servers are down. So. For the past hour or so, I've been trying to work on this, get the servers going. Um, I have a new book, which is like a machine learning book I just got for Christmas. Uh, I'm reading this and buffing up and doing some self-learning while I'm waiting for the servers to go. I have a second project also running simultaneously, but of course, both my projects require SAS on these servers, and so I'm kind of down. So it's 3.36 right now. I'm gonna take a break, probably, and like clean up my my house for a bit for a few hours here uh, try to relax and then i'm going to come back probably around 6 6 30 uh, when everyone else goes home recheck the servers to a see if the servers have been fixed or b if it's just too many people on the servers at once um, as we're after the holidays i'm sure they are super busy with people trying to catch up on work so i will check the after hours and if that works i'll probably work another four or five hours tonight and we'll see how that goes so anyways let's keep going all right so it's 7.05 and I'm just finishing up my work in SAS now because the servers are just backlogged with all of the people that are coming back from vacation, I think. And so the servers are jammed up. Now that I have time, I'm back on at seven o'clock. I started like at 6.45. Uh, I'm gonna work probably till about eight, but I have my algorithm, I call it an algorithm. I have my program all set up that actually generates the different analysis I need to do. Uh, it's one analysis, it's in generating gains tables, but looking at residuals based on different segmentation and splits. And so I have this built, it's my code. Um, it's in basically compliance with what my manager likes to see. And so now I'm just gonna run this on a variety of different variables. It should probably take like an hour or two. I have to run it on a variety of models, two different segments, and then I'll have the results done for that. Um, that's just one piece of the entire project I'm working on. I still have to go back and do uh, deeper dives from today's meeting on different issues the model has and some findings we have. Nothing too serious, but things we'd like to say, you know, you should improve X, Y, and Z. Here's the analysis from you know our team, and this is what we're gonna look at as validation. So anyways, guys, that's kind of it. That's my day thus far, day one here. Um, I mean, it's not too exciting, but it's something I like to do. I really like doing like the analytical work. Uh, right now I'm working in Excel. I'm not the biggest fan of Excel. I'm really good at it, but it's just not like something that piques my interest and is like super exciting to do. But the SAS programming portion, I really do love. It's something you really dive in and it's exciting. And like you pull all the code that the developers give you in the models and it's a bit of a headache getting from what they give you 
um, and converting it into exactly what you need, like the data set structures, and then being able to do your own independent analysis. And then when you think you're smarter than somebody else, which is kind of the fun part of validation, uh, you can go in and build competing models or challenger models, or you can say, you know, you definitely didn't do this right, let me do my own method and test it. And then you can go in and sample and test it and kind of give your opinion and expertise if you're an expert in a specific area on why your method's better, and what's better within the model. So anyways, guys, uh, I'm gonna finish out here the last hour or so. You can see my Christmas tree's gone. My wife got home from work. Yeah, and she removed that and put that away. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks guys, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so it's Friday. Um, I just got up, and we're getting ready to start work today. Again, I just get out of bed and start working because it's the best way to get going for the day. All right, so I didn't mention this before, but I work for two comp well, technically two different divisions. Um, I work for like the big company, and then uh, I validate usually a subsidiary, and so I have two laptops. But this is my typical morning routine. I just sign into both computers. Uh, I check my emails for the day and see if I have any scheduled appointments because I have a bad habit of actually missing meetings um, because I forget about them and I'm actually busy programming. And so today I know I have one meeting. Uh, I'm calling a student from Emory. Uh, we're gonna chat about some career advice and see where he's going, what he wants to do. But yeah, this is kind of my morning routine. I mean, it's a little after eight, slept in a bit, and I'll probably get programming here again on the project from yesterday and really focus in on trying to get as much of the analysis done as possible as the deadline is essentially next Friday with a few days of fudge space, maybe up to an extra week. Uh, but I prefer to get this one done as soon as possible because I also have to juggle my second project at the same time, and we typically have weekly meetings for both. <laughs> tables created analysis done I'm probably going to create a gains table video again it will not be on any actual data I'll make up my own data for this but I think they're pretty amazing and they do a lot of I guess synthesizing of data of large sets down to kind of manageable sizes and give you kind of patterns and trends within residual analysis as well as looking at separations for example like chaos of goods and bads and credit modeling and I think you could use them in other areas as well, but they're just not commonly used in other places. Uh, I took a, like 20 minute break. I ran, took a shower real quick. Again, I'm still drinking my coffee. Uh, something else that you don't see in these video, and this video I guess, and the one from yesterday, which I'll be put into one, is that I listen to a lot of music while I program. Since I spend 90% of my time um, in days where I don't have meetings, programming and that's like part of the fun of this job especially for me is like even in at work in the office I have my earbuds in constantly uh, because most of my work is just solo I'm programming um, just to give you guys more insight in what we do uh, we have these models we're doing quick analysis on things and when I say quick analysis it's really the fact that I don't have you know three months to develop a model or a month to develop a model with multiple people as many development teams do in risk management uh, validation's job is to go through, take the entire process, uh, look at exactly what you did. So you have like these reports. I print all of mine out uh, on paper. I take notes all over the place. They're typically between like, I don't know, 30 pages to like 80 to 120. Uh, most of mine are typically smaller, which I like. It's less reading for me. But the documentation gives you an overview of what your the model developer did. And then, of course, as somebody outside of development, you typically have a whole list of questions. And so validation's job is to go in, analyze each and every piece, and make sure that it was done either A, correctly, or B, there might be a better method that would yield better results. Because as a lot of people don't realize, uh, models are just approximations to reality. They are not reality. I say this all the time, especially in older videos. But the reality is you can always make a model better. 
However, there's definitely a trade-off between how much time you wanna spend on development and how good your model is. And so typically we have really good models that don't take too much time to make. I mean, a month to three months is typically the development period. Uh, that's quite a bit of time, to be honest with you. But they're good solid models, they give great results. Um, that's all a bank can ask for really. But I mean, for example, I think it's like an exponential kind of curve where the fact is at the top of the curve, you're not gaining much for every additional hour you spend in development. So if you took a model that took three months to develop and you gave them like, I don't know, two years to develop, I don't really know how much value would even be added. And if it was, it'd probably just be minuscule value in general, but that's kind of what we're doing today is I'm going through a lot of the results. So I've already been through the data analysis. I've looked at their variable selection, their cluster analysis, for example, uh, how they selected the variables using stepwise. Do they use business logic? We talk to the model users and make sure that they're okay. They're on board. They understand the models. They agree that the variables in the models make sense from a business logic standpoint. Um, and then we look at model structure. Is it the correct model structure? And then we go through finally, which is the stage I am, and I'm going through all the different results. So did they miss variables during the process? Can I filter out variables they should have been using? We look at how the accuracy is of the model. We check the chaos for different characteristics. So in my case in credit, we're typically splitting uh, goods and bads. So you have good candidates and bad candidates. Uh, these models are probability of default so i'm trying to figure out a who's good and good definition could be you know 60 days past due would be less than that um, there's different varieties of definitions what you consider good and bad but essentially we're trying to figure out who's going to default and who's not going to default um, it's 11 a little after 11 here it's like 11 no 9 11 10. Uh, I'm going to continue programming here and finish up. Again, I have one meeting today. It's not even a work meeting. It's a meeting with a student on the phone. And for those of you that don't understand, I love doing these meetings. It kind of breaks my day up. Um, it usually only takes half an hour to an hour. I typically do these like as my lunch breaks so I can move them around, but I make sure I get in at least eight hours of work typically. Um, as you guys saw yesterday, I worked late. That's not super common, but it does happen from time to time. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna dive back in here. I still have quite a bit of work to finish up. Um, and then once I finish this portion of my analysis, I'll send it to my manager for discussion and review and see what they think, see if they agree with my opinions and outcomes analysis. And then I'll go into doing more analysis and other parts that we need to finish up for this project. I wouldn't even be fit close to finishing this project today. I'm sure it'll take me at least all of next week. But just to give you guys kind of an insight, once all this analysis is done and all the charts are doctored up so they look nice and pretty and they have like the right titles and the right colors and all the business stuff, which I call the doctoring part, it's like the artistic part. Once all that's finished up, then we actually have to present these and they have to go through a committee and the committee has to approve or reject more or less our decision on what we're going to do. And then once that's done, then we communicate the final decision to the model developers. And like vast majority of the time, it's models are passed with findings. Findings meaning there were some issues. They're typically minor issues and then they just fix them. And then once all this is approved, we have to write up this big report and this gets presented to a variety of different people. But we have the final report. We have the review and challenge before that or after that, depending on how it's set up. But essentially you have to take everything you did and you have to compress all this down into like a reasonable size, but you have to explain that you looked at all these different areas because A, when you have review and challenge sessions, these are with other directors and experts within our field here, within the bank, uh, and they will criticize and look at different points. Like, did you do X, Y, and Z? Did you miss this? Why didn't you look at that? Uh, this chart doesn't look like what we were expecting. Uh, did you look into this? And so you have to be able to explain every single thing you did as a validator, as well as every single thing the developers did and why they did it and why you reviewed it or didn't review it. So that's kind of a little more of an overview of validation. I'll probably do a full video on that, but I'm gonna dive back in, finish this up here, and then hop on my call here at noon. So let's keep working and we'll see where we end up for the day. This call is an hour long and it was just discussing uh, different topics that a student wants to take. They're in the undergrad. They're trying to figure out what they want to do for a career. They're trying to figure out class selection, you know, different types of majors and all that. Uh, it was a great conversation though. I'm not gonna go into the details on the call itself. I'm not gonna go into the details on what makes a great call, 
But overall, there was a lot of good feedback between both myself and them, them giving me, you know, good questions, good answers. Um, I gave him some good questions, but it was like a good conversation of both of us adding value to the conversation itself and uh, really gaining some insight on the student and then also providing some insight to them on the industry and the different types of jobs available and which majors would set you up best for different types of jobs. As you can see, I always walk around a lot of them on calls here. Just calling on for over an hour. Great conversation again, but definitely a good value of my time and a good use of their time. All right, so we're gonna wrap up the day probably right about here. Um, I almost have all the outcomes analysis done. We're still looking through some of the outcomes analysis, which led me to deeper outcomes analysis because we want to essentially prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the changes and recommendations that validation is making are significantly better than the change than the original model that the developers built. But again, being in validation, you need to prove all these things and not just say like, I have a, an idea or I have like this one piece of evidence, but not being able to like prove it all the way out and build a better model and actually show that model. So anyways, it's like 4.30. Uh, I'm pretty tired and mentally worn out from the day. Um, but this is kind of the last two days of work for me. I don't show you guys a lot of the data or anything because it's all proprietary to my actual job, so it's nothing I could actually show you. But this is just kind of the wrap up of what validation is. I'm working a lot both in SAS where I generate all my analysis, my reports, and then usually managers and directors and other people like to see things in Excel because they can easily manipulate it without having to uh, know SAS. And so after I've generated a lot of the results, I have to copy, paste everything, just small tables, not like massive data sets. Cause I mean, I'm dealing with millions of observations here, but once we get down, we synthesize these down to small tables and then we end up outputting significant values like chaos and doing gains charts and plotting data. And then these plots are all put into Excel and I have to go through and do the tedious part of actually color coding and making the lines look different so we can look at you know both our model versus developers model and see how the results are but again this job is highly dependent on statistics um, these models are built in different types of model structures so there's ols there's logistic there's arima right now i'm dealing with both uh, time series model development which is a model that is built uh, as an autoregressive model so it's part of the arima style of time series models and then the project I've been working on for the past two days because of the urgency uh, is all in logistics. And so you have kind of different mixes of skills and statistics, and then being able to really analyze results, model structure, variable selection, like the entire development process and challenging that is essentially what my job is. Um, I hope you guys can see too, like I work from home a few days a week. Uh, it's one of the luxuries I have that's specific to different jobs. Uh, not all validation jobs, not all development jobs, not all risk jobs allow you to work from home, but it's something I look for and I actually ask. So before I took my current job, that was one of my stipulations was I was able to work from home. But it's fun. I eat better. I work out more. Uh, when I have something crazy, like I had that phone call earlier today at noon and talking to a student, which went really, really well, um, I can just like casually walk over, have the conversation and life is good. If I wanna eat healthy, I can just take a break. I can make something healthy. Unlike being at work where I pack my lunch every day. So if I don't have time, I just eat leftovers from the night before, which is probably 80, 90% of the time. The other advantage from working from home is that when you have meetings, sometimes they can be frustrating and kind of irritating or like somebody like emails you something and it's just ridiculous. Uh, working from home is great because I can literally just like walk away from my computer and like take a break so I can take a walk. I went out today and checked on my bees. It gives me like a good mental break. It resets me and then I can come back and I'm actually more productive at home than I am uh, when I'm in the office. Um, I'm sorry about the crappy lighting here, but this is the end of the day here. The shadows are being cast. I just wanted to give you guys a quick wrap up on what this is. I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments below. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell button if you want notifications. Um, and as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. 